do here and that we do with the community. So one of the things that I would like you to do after we uh, conclude the presentations is that you introduce yourself to someone that you don't know, let them know who you are. The services that you provide, you know, just have that one-to-one -one so you can open that door for that other person. Before we start our presentation, and today we're going to have a preview, uh, Diego from La Noticia is going to, to provide us a really great information, and then we're going to have our main presentation from Alliance, Alianza, I mean. And they're still working some technical issues. We hope that we get those resolved. If not, I uh, will tell our speakers, just be prepared for plan A, plan B, and plan Z. Because <laughs> you know, those things happen, especially during the mornings, and cold mornings could be kind of tricky. Before that, I just want to let you know I'm going to pass some uh, flyers, and one of the flyers is about Votemos Juntos. Tomorrow, star early voting, so who's going to vote? Who's going to vote? So, Yes, we are voting together. And this is going to be at the Independence Regional Library. I'm going to give you the information, pass the flyer, take a picture. It's going to be 3 to 7 p.m. So there's going to be music, there's going to be information, there's going to be a lot of people from Alaska. They are supporting this. So uh, if you cannot vote, just take someone who can vote with you. So get this information. Oh, because we are starting to vote, and I just want to vote really early. So make sure you know that everybody votes and everybody and everybody comes. So Latino to voto cuenta. Besides that, uh, also tomorrow we are going to have uh, from the Enlace Health Committee. We're going to have the Latino Mental Health Network Group meeting, and once uh, Mavix arrived here, she's going to provide you more information about this. But if you are interested in mental health, uh, if you're interested in know resources or be part of this community, uh, please try to attend this meeting. So I'm also passing this flyer. So uh, there's an uh, email that you can send. The meeting is going to be tomorrow at the Belmont Center. It starts at 9.30 a.m., all right? So you will have the information there. With that, I just want to thank Diego. Diego. So Diego Barahona is from La Noticia. He's a recognized journalist and a really wonderful member of our Latino community. And with him, uh, we have, uh, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves and they are going to give us a preview of a program that they are working in with the community. So thank you and a big round of applause for them, please. Good morning, Enlace. Good morning. We have five minutes to tell you an exciting problem that we have at La Noticia. My name is Diego Maracona. I'm the editor of La Noticia with this Oriana Silva on the project my money and me, mi dinero, yo. So let's begin. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. So let's talk about money. How many of you like to talk about money with your friends or family members? No. Not so many friends, right? <laughs> well, you're not alone. Wells Fargo unveiled a fantastic survey early this year revealing that more than half of respondents have a love paid relationship with money. Four out of 10 adults and half of young people remain reluctant to discuss about money in general, making it more difficult topic to discuss than religion, politics, or even death. The good news is that there is awareness of the need to learn more about finances. 80% of adults and 91% of, of young people decided to learn new ways about finances. Respond to this in April this year, Wells Fargo and La Noticia joined forces to launch an initiative that can help the Latino community improve their relationship with money. Me, Mary, Joe, or my money and me 
is a is a project. Minero Yo, My Money and Me Project is a platform to create original content to provide the Latino community with key information about personal finances. During these three years partnership on our newsletter, newspaper, social media, and our YouTube channel, we will publish finance education to reach you and reach your family in a practical manner and with our signature of quality journalism. So maybe some of you have seen some of the videos that we have produced, many of the content that this is in Spanish. Fabiana is there, she's fantastic, you should see her. And uh, the good news is it's really moving on. In these first five months, we have produced uh, around 31 videos, around 50 articles, we have had 100,000 impressions in our people. And the most impressive part is the comments, because you know, comments in internet are not a nice place to be. <laughs> However, the comments of the videos in Fabiana are really the exception. 99% are really good comments, people thinking about the information, learning, saying, I want to apply this in my life. So with that in mind, we want to go to the next step. And the next step is to go to the community. So this is the project, this is the plan. We have two more minutes to, to tell you that. So, from starting next year, we would like to offer to the Latino community, to churches, to organizations, to soccer clubs, you name it, schools, we would like to offer free uh, seminars about financial education. We, need, we know that this is a big need in our community. And we don't have any, any hidden agenda, we're not selling any webinars or any books or anything like that, because usually when someone offers financial education, it's something behind, we don't offer that because we have this project with Wells Fargo, we are already paid, that's fine. But we want to educate our community. So if you're interested, if your organization would like to open a seminar or if you have an event, or if you have a people that would like to learn more, more about um, savings, loans, how to you know, be prepared for retirement and all those topics, please let us know at the end of this event. So we will be here happy to help. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Um, and now the, I guess, our keynote presentation. As many of you know, substance abuse is a big issue plaguing our community. Fortunate for us today, we have Alianza today that will be speaking to us about the important work that they do in that space. So I'll give it up to my co-board member, Deanna, to come and introduce her team. So give them a round of applause. <laughs> Hello everyone, good morning, buenos dias. Um, so it's KSET. My name is Diana Martinez and I am from Alianza, um, which is a coalition part of the Center for Prevention Services. And this is my manager. Hey everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hopefully the presentation comes up, but if not, uh, we'll go ahead and start talking. Um, so uh, something that Alianza does, right? Um, as Kate said, we are a substance misuse prevention organization. Uh, so we do not do treatment, um, but we do have a harm reduction department. So what does harm reduction do? Um, part of the mission that they do is providing people who are currently actively using drugs with um, safe methods to do so, such as clean needles, uh, naloxone kits. Naloxone is a drug, and the only drug known to reverse um, opioid uh, overdose. Uh, and what are opioid are pills, such as fentanyl. Right, so uh, our harm reduction department gives those out to people who are actively using drugs. And uh, we have another department called Blood Grant where they do the same thing that we do, uh, but they work in about four other counties. And the Latino department, of course, uh, we do all things prevention, but in Spanish or bilingual uh, as needed in the community. And we mostly focus in Mecklenburg County, uh, but we do also work um, in, in Union County. And um, for that, I want to add a little more extra. Um, <laughs> all right, well, the harm reduction is a fairly new part, and the thing about that is they actually work case management to help them along their journey to hopefully one day say, hey, I, I want to stop this stuff. You know, because for the longest time with treatment, it's always been good treatment, and you're off and on going to, and it's hard, because a lot of folks who don't know much about addiction is that it's difficult. It's some, I would say, 
If you haven't known anybody in your family who suffered from addiction, it's no joke. And it's definitely something ongoing for life. So anyway, just keep that in mind. And that's why it's fairly new about that. Uh, one of the things is Alianza's mission is to use environmental prevention, education, uh, community collaboration, y'all, to create change and present, uh, prevent substance use within Latino youth and their parents. Um, and one of the things I could say is that Center for Prevention Services has been the, I would say, the, the foundation to help us be able to do that work. Uh, we started in 2014, and um, that Center for Prevention Alianza. And um, it's been, we've been active for 10 years, and we have about, we're now in year nine of a grant that helps us do work with youth. Uh, six grants actually fund our programs with their youth. But a lot of the things that we're missing is we have parents and kids, but we need professionals to get more involved. Because I get to, at the end of the day, if, if it's not your kids, it's the kids in the school system, it's your neighbors, it's your sister's kids or your brothers. I mean, we can ignore things all day, but one thing that tends to happen is you ignore it, it grows. Okay, prevention's always been around. But the problem is there's not a lot of people stepping up to provide their intelligence in their different areas like police, teachers, and so forth. Every field you can think of in the ones that you're in contribute in some way to working with us to stop this, to educate parents, and things like that. And that was not even in the presentation, but when I get inspired, woo, it's scary. <laughs> um, but I want to give a shout out to uh, Jessica Montana, our intern, and Gigi, both to our interns over here on the corner. There, there you go. And I'm not sure if anybody else has ever been on our board, but I know that Diego Torres over here. I said, he's supposed to be family because he has the same last name. But anyway, no, he's cool. He's, he's family to me. Um, but thank you uh, to those folks. Anna, for, she'll talk a little bit later about Familia Delante, but she's our program coordinator within that. She's doing a lot of great work in the community. So anyway. Yes. Uh, so all of you have a piece of paper, this piece of paper on your desk. Um, this is just a little bit about general information about our coalition, um, as well as contact information. So as Ricardo said, our mission involves around a lot of collaboration, and that collaboration uh, recently came to pass uh, really, really well with advocacy efforts. Uh, so we recently had um, a meeting with Mecklenburg County Behavioral Health um, Strategy Planners. Uh, we had our meeting at the Latin American Coalition and about 17 professionals from different organizations were able to attend. So what is this supposed to do? Um, so we were we started this conversation because we noticed that in the strategic health plan, uh, there was not really much mention of uh, program increase for Latino families or um, anything really focused for the Latino population. Uh, so we actually ended up writing a statement in collaboration with about 20 other professionals uh, to advocate for more programs in general, not just prevention, uh, for the Latino community. Um, thankfully, the, the strategic health planners from the county uh, took our statements uh, into consideration, and they actually added it into the strategic health plan, uh, which you can read for, uh, on the Mecklenburg County website. Um, so this was a huge step for us, and recently, we met with them a couple times, and they were really curious as to see how they could implement these uh, different steps and programs in the Latino community. Uh, so that meeting was, uh, the, the purpose of that meeting was for professionals to come in and talk about the easiest and most convenient ways for the county to get involved with the Latino community. Uh, so a huge shout out to those people who are able to come to, and hopefully uh, all of you can uh, participate in those conversations in the future so that we can help the county better uh, understand our community and also join us in that conversation to promote programs in our community. Um, I just want to add that the one of the other things we threw in there besides prevention programs need to increase because everybody just thinks mental health first aid is the only program that does prevention in the area of mental health and substance use. Uh, there's other programs like Amina de Lante and other evidence-based programs, so that's going to be added. But we all know at the same time there's a huge gap in services for our people. Well, the therapists and you name it, there's just a long list of things. So we also brought those because the pipeline needs to change. We need to be working toward recruiting and things of that nature. So those plans are also in there. And that was our, that was in our solutions, but with the 20 people, we threw that in there and they, they accepted it. So we're gonna work continuously and we're gonna work with the community members. And if y'all wanna continue working with us, if y'all are not that you're hearing about it, 
please do talk, contact us and we'll let you know when the next meeting is. Yes. Um, so if, in case, in case, by any chance, if you're not interested in really becoming like an advocacy member with the community uh, or like uh, the Mecklenburg County with us, there's also other ways that you guys can collaborate with us. We offer a lot of programs. Uh, so let's say you know you're applying for a grant. It's youth focused, family focused, or increasing education. Uh, we offer a variety of different evidence-based programs uh, that can help. That can help if you guys would like to collaborate with us. Uh, one of those is Team Familia Adelante. Um, it's a program that is evidence-based in the Latino community and is focused for for the Latino community. It can be taught in Spanish and English, um, and it's mostly to uh, improve communication with families. And it's about 12 weeks, eight to 12 weeks. Um, and we also have another program that we, we collaborate a lot with the Stanford University Research Lab, and they offer a variety of different um, tobacco, marijuana, different substance, uh, per, substances prevention programs, and we're well versed in those as well, so if you guys are interested, those are more short term, six, five weeks, so if you're applying for a grant, you know, you want a short term program that educates youth and families, um, those, are, those are perfect. Uh, we also offer a parent present parent presentations, a parent education series. Uh, so those are mostly for parents. Usually um, we present twice, once or twice to families, uh, but not youth. Um, it's been taught uh, plenty of times, uh, a lot of science facts around this, that presenting to youth once or twice about drugs is just not effective. Um, they definitely need more something um, long-term. So if you're looking for a long-term program for youth or families, let us know. Or if you just want one or two uh, different presentations for parents only, uh, let us know as well. And we also do Family Forward program. The Family Forward program is to increase the is to better the family unit itself, to improve communication, education, and a lot and a lot more. Um, so you guys can contact us if you guys would like to collaborate, know more about our programs, or how you can be involved. Or if you yourself would like to become a facilitator for one of those programs, and we can help uh, facilitate that training for you. Um, of course, you're free. Um, so, something else that we wanted to um, note is that on the table over here, you will find uh, a pro something called the Digital Impact Program. Uh, we are still recruiting, um, and this program is for youth uh, ages 11 to 18. We'll make exceptions for 10 year olds, um, not Latino focused. Um, and we basically are teaching them the art of photography with professional photographers. And they also learn about substance abuse prevention. So we get really creative with how we, you know, <laughs> try to teach prevention with kids, especially um, as well as parents. We try to involve the arts and different activities um, to make it fun, basically. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but prevention doesn't just, you know, talking about you know drugs are bad. Prevention itself is just having a group, you know, having a, fam a, fa a strong family unit. Prevention is kids going somewhere after school. Um, where they're busy with the kids their age with similar, you know, likes and dislikes and where they can just hang out. That, that itself is a productive factor from substance use. Um, so if you're curious about the program itself, uh, it'll be about 16 weeks. Uh, we'll have two cohorts, so if you don't have time to join this one or uh, your families don't have time, we also have a second cohort um, in the following, starting in February, um, all the way to June. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions about that and we can also talk about our partners. Right. Um, great thing about being a, being around ten years is you have people come and go, but that's just the nature of our work. The revolving door in, our, in social work and in the health, public health sector. We have um, Maura Chavez, our chair. <laughs> she's been well. She's our chair till December, but we're grateful for her, for her stepping up and helping us out. Um, but we have a bunch of different folks. Um, the Latin American Coalition. We have um, Galilee Ministries. Galilee Ministries, which is up here on uh, Central Avenue. We have, you know, we have so many churches that are involved. Faith Salud Coalition, uh, Recast, uh, Mecklenburg County uh, Public Health, and a bunch of other ones I can mention. But mostly, I would say the churches that are working with allowing us to do Familia Lante have been very helpful. But um, also Atrium and other folks that Anna has been able to talk to doing programs like Familia Latte in the community. So there's a place that y'all would like us to do a program for the families and the kids at the same time, separately. It's, that's the way it works. And it's very effective because it talks about mental health stuff. We talk about stuff, tools that help youth and parents learn to talk to each other. The communication gaps, the issues that happen. There's a lot of stuff going on in our culture today that we don't know, parents don't understand, you know? Just like that DJ Jesse Jess song, parents just don't understand, you know, honestly. 
I'm not going to sing it for you, but anyway, I could. <laughs> but I think, realistically, I think we, uh, we have our partners, but we would love to have more. Because like I said, a lot of folks don't really care about kids sometimes, or maybe they just don't, are just too busy involved in other things, which is understandable. But the, our kids are our future. We need to sway them away with using messages that let them know they have options better than using drugs. Because honestly, drugs are not the way. They're just ways to cope with issues they're not dealing with. That's like adults. And I'm not saying adults do that well with drinking wine and other stuff whenever they had a stressful day. But you're a grown person. You're 21 years of age. As long as you're not drinking and driving or, or doing other stuff, good. You know, that's not legal. But anyway. Oh, yeah. uh, something <laughs> about that. Uh, so our, our organization itself, again, is evidence-based. We have based all of our research programs and education on evidence. Uh, so we don't use scare tactics, as in you smoke marijuana, you're going to die in two days. We don't do that. Um, so if you get more curious as to see, you know, where we get our research from, you know, how, how things work, or if you're just interested in obtaining some information, such as a, maybe like a one-page flyer, or if you're interested in just collaborating to educate parents more, um, there's plenty of ways for us to collaborate. Just let us know. And we're super open, and like I said, to doing different programs with you, or if you would like us to come in and do any, anything of that capacity. Um, but yes, uh, so that is for our youth program and the youth outreach. We do families as well, of course. And something else I wanted to bring up was that we are currently working again with different organizations, such as uh, like Ricardo Set Galilee Ministries, and that's where our current youth program is. So just to add a little more, besides programming and our evidence-based programs, which you have to have something that proves to work. To get funding, you need to have proof before and after that there's been a change. Evidence-based is very important because, like I said, if you just get there and did the old school stuff like D.A.R.E., which was known not to work, evidence-based, look it up. It doesn't work. And I'm not putting them on blast. I'm just being real. person in prevention needs to know what information to give the kids and let them know about the choices they have. But that, I mean, scare tactics, a lot of folks also in the police department do that. And I'm a person who used to work for the police department many years ago. I don't agree that's the way. Because honestly, you scare them enough, guess what? They're gonna be the opposite of what you say. So let them know what the things. But anyway, uh, our programs and what we do, our coalition also meets on Wednesdays at two o'clock today, uh, uh, in person, but we're going to start doing trainings virtually, doing stuff on Facebook Live, because honestly, the information on what's going on with marijuana legislation, for example, is changing all the time. I'm not sure if y'all seen the distilleries pop up, right? In, in Mecklenburg County, but FYI, it's still illegal. But there's been like, oh, medicinal this and all this stuff, but we're going to do some trainings on that. Get the real facts so that you know. But it doesn't mean like I said, we need to let people know facts about that drug and fentanyl and other things. Alcohol seems to be one, still number one drug used in the world, but mostly also reasonably to, for easy to get to get. So within what we do, um, I think we do a whole lot more, but I think it's kind of left my mind. And Center for Prevention Services has been like the, the pillar to help us bring these things out, find funding to do creative things. Go to our uh, preventionservices.org, look at Alianza, and look at the blog where you see a lot of the videos of the quinceañeras we put. We did last year, we did two quinceañeras, fully paid for all the all the girls' dresses and everything for that. That was something we're likely gonna bring back. Funding is usually an issue with that. Uh, we're gonna do theater programs that have to do with messages about substances and mental health, which we did already. We're gonna do it again. So these things are not something that, you know, we just created yesterday. These are things that, you know, we just need to make sure we give kids a space to be themselves, to talk when their parents are not around, and hopefully lead that conversation. It's almost like a support group. But anyway, we do this, we work closely with CMS. We, do, we used to do stuff in the CMS system that was helpful to help us find out what the trends are, but we can't do that anymore. So now we're using different ways, we're doing policy work, which we need to do more of to make sure change happens. You can teach a kid all day, you teach a parent all day, but you need to attack the issues when they end up going to uh, Raleigh or start being implemented here in the local counties. So, um, oh, okay, so just a quick question, just to get a little bit like of knowledge, a, text, a little text here. 
Um, who would like to guess how many brands of vape there are? Vapes are electronic cigarettes. How many brands there are? Any numbers? Any numbers? Three hundred and seven. Two hundred. Over a hundred. Over a hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. A thousand. Seventy. So very close over here. Uh, so there are actually um, right now. 460 different brands of uh, vapes or electronic cigarettes. What anybody, any, any, everybody knows what the FDA is here, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, who would like to guess how many of those brands are FDA approved? Zero. 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 Uh, 43. 43. <laughs> 43. 43 of the 460 uh, different brands of vapes or electronic cigarettes are FDA approved. So you may be wondering, you know, how are these companies selling if they're not legally approved by the FDA? Um, the answer is because there are so many applications, so many brands coming up almost every single day that the FDA simply cannot catch up. Uh, they can't catch up, they can't catch them in time. People are selling them, making money before the FDA even like realizes who we are, right? So um, a lot of those brands are, 34 of those 43 are tobacco based which means nicotine involved. But you don't have to have the tobacco to have the nicotine, right? Um, that can be extract extracted and put into all those 460 different vapes, make them addictive. Um, did y'all also know that flavored vapes are illegal? Uh, they are illegal, so like mango, pina colada, chocolate, mint. Yeah, uh, menthol, menthol is the only one that the FDA has stated uh, that can be legal, but the flavors are still around, super easy to get to, so don't think that the youth have to go to like a store, show their ID. Um, you can literally just look up Dupan, uh vape, and it's super easy to buy online. Um, and they'll just ask you a simple question, are you 21? Yes. And that's it. Uh, so just like a quick fun, not so fun fact about like different vapes, uh, as well as different substances. Um, so ending with that, does anybody have any questions? I know we were like, super brief, Maybe you would like to know about, about more about certain programs or things like that. Let us know. Yes. You know, last week CFD released this report about crime. Mm -hmm. said that homicides are the rise, violent crime are the rise, and they say that you people are the driven force behind these, these numbers. And one thing that got my attention is they put police police. They said that parents told them that they cannot control the kids anymore. And they come from the police. That's what they are saying. So, if you guys have any something like special things, kind of strange. All right. Yeah. Actually, what we have is uh, what we calculate in the annual spending about the media and the last thing. And that's basically a program for the community. We have a in one room, we have the youth in another room, and they all learning like about the same subjects, about communication, about how to say no to drugs, but in the real time. We're now going with the uh, Comité Delante was based in a program created by the Cisimbates from California. So it's a program from a Latino to a Latino parents, which makes a huge difference. We can talk to the parents about how to share with the children how to um, not alienate the issues that are going on in the school and to have open mind to find out like the facts that Diana um, talked about, those are the facts that we discuss with parents. A lot of parents, they are not aware of what's going on outside their household. They cannot be with their children 24 hours a day, but they can have tools to work with them. So to have a Latino family in our programs, and that's something that I would like to invite everybody if they have families, if they have a space on your um, groups or, or your organizations to have these programs that we have because we are going around the city. City of Charlotte is our first target. So we are going around the city, different neighborhoods, and we go and look for our families at the supermarkets, at the second hand store. We step them on the, we stop them on the street. And we let them know this is what Familia Adelante to do for you family. And it's a free program. So I would like to ask everybody that is in here, if you know a family, if you know a group, if you know an organization that they can have this program, uh, help us out because that's what a community does. We are a member, we don't have a nation. I see people here and we are all are from different countries. But we are, this is our city, this is our home. So we have to do a reset and fight for it. Thank you, Anna. And Diego, to answer your question, kids who are already involved in the 
the system. They need a lot more, and there's we want to do that. That's what prevention is. Well, those two kids that are already committing big crimes, they need intervention, and they need treatment, or they need to be in a program that has intense, I don't know, like boot camp or something. I'm not saying those things exist. I think they do, but they're very rare, and they're expensive. For families who don't have the funds, that's hard. So what I would say is that's another thing we need to figure out. What exists out there for, for kids and those things? And the thing is, I, I can't sit here and tell you. I used to be a part of a program called Gang of One that the police had that dealt with that exact thing. But we don't have time to talk about that because it doesn't exist anymore. But anyway, we'll talk later if we need to. And any other questions? We only have about two more questions. Yes. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> how would we, for example, I'm part of the PTSO at my kid's school. How would I connect the counselors? Because we have something similar um, how could I connect the counselors to you guys to extend those programs to the families? Like, who is is this something that I can actually do? Can I bridge you two together? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so something that we also want to uh, assure there are other school representatives here is that we don't put pressure on the teachers themselves. We don't train the teachers. We don't train the staff. We our staff can come in and of course share everything that we can offer. And if it is you know approved, then we can go ahead and go in for you guys. Um, but yes, uh, you can just contact us, and it's just not that Latino department, we have a black art department as well that works very closely to the schools, and they, ha they already have uh, in-school programs, uh, such as the African-American families. Strong, strong African-American strong families. Programs, and so we have a variety of different programs, not just Latino department, so even if it's not our department, we can definitely connect you to other departments in our organization that focus on evidence-based prevention programs and youth development um, education as well, and it's very direct. Mm -hmm. So is it better if like the parents request it instead of you guys trying to go through the CMS system trying to get into these schools? Um, that depends on kind of what you're looking for because some programs, you know, now with the Parent Bill of Rights require that parent uh, permission. Um, but if already kind of like in that school's, you know, curriculum development kind of series where it would be like, for example, Mind Block and things, something like that, um, then it would probably be easier. But of course, you still need that parent permission. So it just depends on like how how often you want it, how often you want the families to be involved, or the parents, or if you just want to youth focus, if you want to be close. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for. Okay. Yes. Hi, Diana. Thank, you. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I wanted to just briefly go back, I, I've never heard that, and we were quizzing about that. You said that mental is, is um, the only legal flavor, only legalized flavor. So what names do you use? <laughs> Uh, they're, they're not legal. Um, it's just that the FDA can't catch up to the companies, so people are selling them online. Even the vape shops, vape shops, vape shops are still selling flavored vapes because the FDA just can't catch up to them. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, what I'm asking is, what makes those vapes? Uh, I can answer that. Go ahead. Um, basically, Tony, um, even though they say that they have flavor in it, the FDA can't control what else they can put in. Um. Okay. Uh, so they're not regulated as to what menthol and all the other ones have. And the, and the FDA actually delegalized flavors because they noticed that youth use was going up. Um, so to stop that youth use from going up, they um, they made flavors illegal um, because they they, no, they noticed the pattern. Um, but you know, vape shops and online vape stores still get away with it. And something yes. else about vape shops, if you notice where the vape companies are putting the vape shops. There's something very interesting regarding the population community around them. Um, they're right at the border as to how far they can go from the school. I mean, they're right at the edge. So even though students are walking, they're walking right by big shops and low-income communities. Because to tell you the truth, and no offense to anybody, you don't see that many big shops in Valentine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I live on the east side of Charlotte, um, in my neighborhood, like almost at any exit, there's a vape shop. So there's about four vape shops just surrounding my neighborhood alone. Uh, and that's on the east side of Charlotte. There's one, There's almost one in every corner, every corner shop of, of the east Charlotte area. Yes. I, I only had a question about your coalition media meetings. Mm -hmm. I remember a while back I used to attend. What's the location? We had to move a couple times because finding a location and times is hard, but then uh, it's right now at 7122 Robinson Church Road. It's at La Voz de la Esperanza. It's the first Baptist uh, church here in Charlotte. Uh, 
Yeah, now's the history. Okay. Um, so 71 to 22, yeah, so obviously church, 22 um, 15, so. Something else I wanted to share is that we have a community WhatsApp group. Um, we welcome all organizations there, all community members, parents, youth, kids, and everything alike. Um, if you would like to be part of that WhatsApp community group, uh, just reach out to me, I can add you to it. Um, you as an organization can also post your own flyers, your own events, and you'll also get real-time updates of what we're doing, any events, volunteer opportunities, and more. Yeah, I had a question, I think we're all the time. No, I want to point out the great work you do in the community, in the festivals, helping, getting the bracelets. Yeah, you get all the volunteers, the sun. You do an amazing job. Oh, yeah, thank you, uh, So, we, I, I think I did a little bit um, with the festivals. Um, yeah, we work with we the Latin American Coalition a lot, as well as other festival coordinators to promote that ball safety in there. Uh, so, we're at the very front of the festival with our youth and parent volunteers. We check IDs, make sure people are over 20, the age of 21, and we distribute the bracelets, but we also do alcohol bar safety checks where our team and our kids go around the festival, um, around where they're selling alcohol to assure that the vendors are following the regulations. Um, so we take it very seriously. Um, but yeah. yeah. All right. Any more questions? I think that's about it. I can go on forever, but you know, honestly, we don't have much time. But just like I said, the point of that, if you want to notice that in our culture, having a kid take a sip of wine or a beer at a younger age is something acceptable yeah. for many at all. But however, Science has proved that it's not good for the development of a child, especially when they're still growing. So it hinders their ability to grow as they should. And I have proof. I have research. If you all want to see, let me know talk to me. I'll send it to you. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for your time. And like I said, we have been around for a while. We're grateful for a lot of folks like Magnus as well, putting her in the spot. She used to be part of us as well. But thank her for her service. And, you know, gracias por todo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ricardo and Diana. Another applause because they did it. You know? That is you. <laughs> we are really grateful for that information. And I think it's very important that we uh, keep in touch with them. Uh, where they can follow you on the social media? Uh, Instagram, uh, at Alianza CLT, or Facebook, Alianza Coalition, and also Twitter. Um, I don't know if you all have that, so. <laughs> yeah, Facebook and Instagram, and if you uh, scan the QR code here, it should take you to our website, I believe, and our social media is also on there as well. All right, so let's follow them. And talking about following people, uh, we need you to follow us and Lasse. So, uh, Thais, can you tell the beautiful people?